Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Unlocking Sibelius. In this guide, you will learn how to integrate Sibelius with your DAW using rewire and virtual MIDI cables. We do this so that you can compose music in Sibelius that will automatically trigger automation and key switches in your DAW, leaving your creativity unencumbered when writing. This is for all you out there that like to deal with notation rather than a MIDI roll, and to me, it's an easier and quicker way to get my ideas realized as fast as possible with the libraries that I like to use. So let's do this. First things first, this is a method that I've developed over the course of a few years and finally mastered it, so I want to share my knowledge with you all. Everything I'm about to tell you isn't new and you can find each of these components around online, but I'm here to bring you a comprehensive guide that I had to piece together and find the right workflow that works for me. Now if you didn't already know, you can use Sibelius as a plugin in your DAW by way of rewire, but this only allows notes to pass through. Using my method, you'll be able to write in Sibelius like you always have, and you'll be able to use your favorite libraries, and you'll be able to record all that good info like velocity, key switch, mod reel, and expression straight into your DAW. Now feel free to pause this video whenever you want. I'll be going over this rather slowly, but there's still a few parts that require you to do some work. At those times, pause the video, get down to business, and then after that, jump back in when you're ready. Now this first part is gonna be all about the presets. The first thing I like to establish is what kind of ensemble we will be working with. This method works for literally any combination of instruments, but it will behoove you to have a game plan going into it, you know? So I'll be using an orchestral template. Now to keep things as simple as possible, we'll be doing everything in score order. This will help with organizations so you know what goes where, regardless of whether you're looking at it or not, and that'll become clear as we move on. We're going to start this process in contact or complete control, either one works. I'll be using complete control to show you all something that I discovered while working on this. And I have a complete keyboard and I like it. So let's start by uh, opening complete control and again contact if you want. So this is the default view for complete control. I don't really like it because I'm used to the contact view. It sucks that we can't change the default view, but it is what it is. Um, as I said, we'll be using an orchestral score and we'll be going through it in score order to show all the nuances of this process. Uh, so I'll be using Native Instruments Symphony Series as a template orchestra, but this works for any library. Comment below if you want me to make a guy with Spitfire's BBC Orchestra Discovery, which is free if you didn't know. It works with that too. All right, if you're using contact, you can just ignore this next bit, but this is for those who are using complete control. First, we're just gonna add one instrument, a uh, woodwind ensemble patch. And now here at the top, you see that it says woodwind ensemble. On the complete keyboard, if you hit the instance button, it'll show you all the instances of complete control you have open in your DAW. This way we'll know what instance is what. Not a big deal, really. It's just something I like to do to stay organized. Next thing we'll do is put this into contact view. Again, those of you already on contact can chill for a second. Now you have to open a contact instrument first for this to work, otherwise it won't. Go to um, the... To go to contact view, we're going to go to uh, drop down menu. Right there. And then next we're going to go to view. And then we're going to select edit view. And as you can see, we're no longer in that kind of complete control view, um, but we don't need the browser or the plugin at the top. So hit this magnifying glass to take that out of view and then hit the plugin button to take that out of view. Now we have something that looks like contact, but notice up in the top right corner, we still have that woodwind ensemble uh, verification. Now we can get rid of the instru instrument because we don't need it anymore. And now we can start adding new ones. For the third time, we're doing things in score order to stay organized. So first thing we're gonna do is add a flute. Now I like to add ones with a multi, samples with multi articulations within it, rather than just the individual articulations. It does work with the individual articulations, but we're doing this right the first time, 
And if you want me to do one on individual articulations, comment down below. Uh, so again, score order. So I'm just going to load in the rest of the instruments in the um, woodwind family. You'll notice that we're just doing the woodwinds right now. This is to keep uh, the family on one instance of context. So we'll have all the woodwinds on one instance, all the brass on a different one, strings and percussion on two separate ones. So, you know, we'll essentially have four instances of contact up. So, this is where the fun begins. We're going to give each of these instruments their own individual audio channel. Right now, all the sounds are aggregated together on a single stereo channel. We're going to do this because we want the ability to manipulate these ind instruments individually rather than collectively. To do that, we're going to click on uh, this box symbol over here. And then we're going to click on outputs. As you can see, the routing for every channel came up. Next, we're going to hit presets, hover over batch functions. Then we're going to select the first option. Clear output selection and create one individual channel for each loaded instrument. And it'll do everything for us. So if you have any samples with different mic positions, this will probably pop up for you. All it means is that those mic positions will be aggregated to that specific instrument. So my flute has four different mic positions and they'll all be routed to the flute output channel rather than their own individual channel. So hit yes. And this is exactly what we want. All right, so listen to what I'm about to say. DAWs consider channels one and two uh, to be the true output of an instance of contact or complete control. That means we have to move each channel down to the next or else there'll be confusion on the channels down the road. This step is very important. So for example, my flutes are on channel one and two we need it to be on channels three and four, oboes on five and six, et cetera, et cetera. So go ahead and click on one and two. And so we'll have this pop up. This next part may look very different for you, but the important thing is this number right here. Plug in out three and plug in out four. That's what you're looking for. I know mine says KT aux one brackets one and two, you know, but we're just looking at where the output is going and this one's going to channel three and four. So this is all sequential. So I'm just going to do the rest. And when you're done, click OK. Click OK again. This is just the system trying to uh, understand what's all has happening. And now we're done with that, you should be able to see this up here. You have the name of your instrument, flutes, and your output channel going to the same name as the channel it's uh, connected to. So flutes, clarinets, oboes, bassoons, all their outputs match their names. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can click this expansion button and right here you'll have uh, plugins and effects that you can use that's built into contact. I don't recommend using them because it uses up a lot of CPU and you will be able to manipulate uh, each individual instrument on a channel anyways in our DAW. So um, it's there for you, but I wouldn't recommend using it for this project. All right, so now that we're done with the outputs, we can uh, clear it. We don't need to see it anymore. Go back out to this box thing, hit outputs, and get rid of it. So this is what everything should look like. You should have your channel name plus the output going to the same channel name and your MIDI channel going to one, two, three, four, sequentially like that, you know. Uh, it shouldn't be on Omni. It should be going to uh, actual number. All right, so... The last thing about this is what I think is the most important thing. Up here, we have this number, 0.61 gigabytes. That is uh, your CPU, you know, how much memory you're taking up. 
you want to keep that down to zero because just imagine having a full orchestra four instances especially with strings plus whatever else is happening in your DAW is going to take up a lot of memory so we want to cut that down because if you don't you're going to get a lot of stuttering stuttering in your samples and and everything else is it, it won't be pretty trust me trust me but to do that we're going to purge so let's go to the save button go to global purge click on reset markers now what that did what contact does is that flag samples that you use and I think it does it to load them quicker um, so resetting the markers deletes the data but not the samples and that's what we want so the next thing we're gonna go is we're gonna go back to the save button go down to global purge again but this time hit update sample pool now because nothing is flagged this will get rid of all samples bringing our memory down to zero this will become evident when you see the sample data bar go to the far left and become red <laughs> and you see up in the top that uh, the number is also zero is no longer 0.61 gigabytes this is exactly what we want because when we go on to play the instrument the sample will automatically load for us. Watch. See? But it'll only be the samples we need, saving us a lot of room on memory down the road. Trust me, it'll be great. So, again, go to Slave, Save, Global Purge, Reset Markers. Then you go back to Save, Global Purge, Update Sample Pool. And that's it, really. Congrats on making it this far. The only thing left to do is save the multi, save everything that we've done. All right, so we're going to go back to the save button. And make sure you click on save multi as. Don't click on save as because that's for individual instruments and not the group. So to preserve our hard work, we're going to go to save as. And then you can name it. I name mine Symphony Winds. Everything else should be fine. There's nothing else you can click, but I already saved it, so I'm not gonna save, but that's where you would click save. And just to prove a point, I'm gonna load it. Now here, it says uh, replace multi. Yes, click that and replace it. Otherwise, it'll combine the two and it'll kinda make a mess of things. So replace the multi. Woo, look at that, look at that blazing speed. Oh. <laughs> This is actually um, my Spitfire uh, stuff. But if you know Spitfire, you know there are no slouch on memory space. And you saw how quickly that loaded with more instruments and, yeah, bigger samples. But you see it still uh, loads the samples. So let's load the right ones this time. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. Symphony wins. And again, replace. Yes. Now, I don't know why, but Symphony Series is the only one that loads a little bit of samples when it loads the instruments. I don't know why, it's the only one, but there you have it. Relatively sl uh, small sample size and you can always um, update the sample pool and all that good stuff, but that's really it. Make sure that everything is in order the way we talked about it, because this is gonna save you a lot of time down the road. And here I'll show you um, some of the other stuff I've been doing. So I also have a uh, brass section. Of course, replace the multi. You just see, look at, look how quickly that loads, guys. I'm telling you, there's nothing better than not waiting around when you have a creative idea ready. You just instantly load it. Everything is uniform. Let's see. Let's go to the um, uh, percussion section next, since we're doing some score order. Look at that. Look at. See how quickly that loaded. Now. This orchestral percussion kit is going to be a beast by itself. So that will probably be a video all by itself. But yeah, everything is exactly where it is. See all these instruments, no, no samples are loaded. Alright, last, last thing is um, the string section. This is all coming from the same uh, symphony series from Native Instruments. Not sponsored. <laughs> Again, string section is usually the biggest one, but it just loads so quickly so quickly and 
I would encourage you guys to do this yourself. If you have a sample library that you like to use that encompasses all instrument groups, uh, make make this for all of them because it'll help you get familiar with it. So like for me, I know that violin one within the strings is always going to be on channel one. Cello is always going to be on channel four, stuff like that for for this library. Um, I know that clarinets within the woodwinds is channel three just off the top of my head. You know, so get familiar with your libraries in this way because that'll help a lot uh, down the road. <laughs> Other than that, guys, I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section. Um, I'm, I'll probably be available to answer it. Uh, there's more videos to come. We'll get way more in depth. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So have a good day. I'll see you next time.